I'm Kylie, and I'm going to be making a Padme dress. More specifically, I'm going to be making Padme's lakeside gown from Attack of the Clones. You know, the one from the scene with the really good dialogue? I don't like sand. The design for this is pretty straightforward. We're going for semi-screen accurate, which means we're going to get as close as possible with my limited skill set. We're also not including the ribbon that goes down the front that divides the dress in half because I don't like it. The gown is divided into two parts, the underdress and the cape thing. For the underdress, I'm going to be using dress A from pattern 8330 by Simplicity. We'll need to alter out the back straps because Padme's dress is indeed strapless. There's also only one seam on this dress and it's in the back, so we'll have to do some adjusting to the pattern there too. Do I know how to alter per se? No. Will I attempt it anyway? Yeah. The cape is a bit more complicated to describe, so I'm going to explain it with pictures. Essentially, it's going to be one long horizontal rectangle that we're going to drape over our body and adjust as we go. The center point on the top is going to be right here. It's going to swoop down and go over the arm, clasped by snaps to hold it in place here. Then it will swoop down here and attach at the base of the back, and we let the rest of the fabric fall for now. These two ends will be sewn together. The center point of the bottom is going to be gathered into that ponytail, then swoop over the wrists, again clasped by the snaps to hold it in place, then we let the rest of the fabric fall. All right, we've got a plan and a deadline. The first thing we have to do is make a trip to Joanne's. Chewing. We're home. The material I'm using is this 100% polyester white fabric. I got six yards for the underdress and seven yards for the cape. I'm pretty short, so I ended up with a ton of extra fabric, which is not the worst problem in the world to have, I must say. I'm also using Rit Dye More Dye for synthetics in Daffodil Yellow, Super Pink, and Royal Purple. And I bought this ribbon to attach to the cape. Believe it or not, I actually made a mock-up for this dress out of some old bedsheets that I found. It's not ideal fabric, but it'll do because why waste fabric and or money? I folded my fabric in half and traced the pattern, and because I want it to be seamless, I said f*** it and rotated this piece as I traced, hoping for the best. From there, I traced the skirt portion a little wider than it should be so it flares out more. This is what I ended up with, and it turned out super well for a first try, which made me nervous. I needed to trim the fabric in by the collar and make a few more small adjustments and also cut off this weird part right here that I think only got there because I didn't use the pattern correctly. Moving on to the real fabric, I surged the edges, I pre-washed it, and I transferred my mock-up to it, leaving about 5 8 inch seam allowance. Side note, I highly recommend a rotary cutter. Like, I want to be a purist and only use scissors, but it's so nice and so convenient and I'm really bad at cutting fabric. I hemmed the dress, sewed up the back, and surged all the raw edges. I repeated this whole process again to make the lining. Here's me wearing one of the dresses. Next, I'm making the collar. I cut out two of these pieces and I'm sewing along the edge at 3 8 inch, starting at the bottom and going all the way around, leaving a small gap at the bottom so I can turn it inside out. It was now time to dye the dress, and oh boy was I nervous. I only filmed myself doing the first color, yellow, because it was pretty boring, honestly. All of the instructions are on the dye bottle, but when it tells you to wait at least 10 minutes with the fabric in the dye, ignore that. We are going for pastels. I went from lightest to darkest, so I poured about half of the yellow dye in my pot and put the top of the dress in there for about 10 minutes, constantly moving it around and dipping it in and out to make sure I could get a good gradient. After I rinsed it out, I moved on to pink. For that one, I used less than half of the bottle of pink dye and a smidge of the yellow. To get just the center section, I folded my dress in half and dunked it in briefly. My pot is definitely too small for this, and I don't think the dye is supposed to be used like that, so the pink turned out a little blotchy, and it took me a lot longer than I would have liked to get a semi-even color. Thoroughly done with this, I dreaded moving on to the purple, but I was brave, and I did. For this one as well, I used less than half the bottle and I held it in the dye for a minute tops and just like with the yellow, I swirled it around and pulled it in and out to get a good gradient. And side note, RIT stains everything. Please cover your surfaces. I attached everything together, starting with the collar area, pinning the lining and the dress right sides together with the collar in the middle, then attached the rest of it along the top opening, the part where my head goes through along the scoop back. I understitched all of that to keep the lining underneath and lined up the back seam of the lining and the dress and stitched those to make sure the two layers stayed together. I finished the dress by trimming the lining and giving the whole thing one final hem. Here's me rewatching the final season of Clone Wars while attaching snaps to the neckline. Here's me rewatching the final season of Clone Wars while I changed the snaps to hooks. It made pretty much no difference and I will probably end up changing the hooks back to snaps anyway. And here's me wearing the finished dress. On to the cape. I trimmed the two long edges with ribbon and then I took a month off because I am busy 
and I'm lazy, and my deadline was Halloween, so plenty of time. Plus, draping fabric on myself by myself sounds horrible. And then my job announced a Star Wars event, and suddenly my deadline was September 21st, one week away. All I have to say about draping this thing is that it is very, very hard to do so by yourself without a mannequin, but it is not impossible. But for the love of God, please have somebody tie the ponytail at the bottom for you, like anybody. And when adjusting the top and the height of the swoops, you're going to want to pull here and here along the arms. To adjust the bottom and the height of the ponytail, you're going to want to pull here and here along the wrists. I gathered the arms in a straight line between the wrists and the elbow-ish, and then I went over it a couple times with the machine to secure it in place. The line kind of shifts around because there's so much fabric here, so to secure that, I attached bands of elastic here and here. It was then that tragedy struck. Long story short, the maintenance man spilled something I didn't notice. It stained the cape. I sobbed for an unnecessary amount of time before I just got the stain out with Dawn dish soap, because God forbid I own a stain remover. I moved on to dyeing the cape, and I know you're supposed to dye it and then sew it, but I'm not confident enough to do that, and it worked out just fine, so... To do this, I marked out with safety pins where I wanted each color to generally transition into the next. I gathered each line of safety pins into a ponytail, dyeing the middle section yellow, the sections on either side of that pink, and the outer sections purple. Um, so basically I did not reach my deadline. On a time crunch, I made a bunch of shortcuts that I could either fix or replace later, and they're not really worth going over right now. And boy am I glad that I wore this to work as a test run, because now I know what I have to fix up before Halloween. Also, enjoy some pictures of me and my coworker as Anakin and my unfinished costume. I attached the cape at the neckline and at the back of the dress, and gathered from the base of the cape to where the purple roughly starts. Though Padme seems to have little white flowers on the front and back of the dress, we're not going for perfect screen accuracy here, so I found these brooches at Joann's that I think work just as well. For the tassels, I beaded some wire and tied the ends to the brooches. I didn't have enough wire to make the tassels as full as I would have liked, but I'm just gonna go back later and get more. The brooches get attached to the ponytail and at the base of the cape. I hemmed the cape, surged it, and covered up the ends with ribbon. And voila! Cape done! Here it is! Look at it! On to the accessories. For the necklace, I held up a sheet of paper to myself while wearing the dress and traced out a general shape, then refined it to make it look more symmetrical and look like an actual thing. Happy with how the paper sat, I cut it into individual pieces and transferred it to the foam, adding a little at the top of each piece so it had room to glue together. This is what it looked like pre-paint. This is what it looked like post-paint and hot glue. And then I added gold chain. The gold chain will hook onto these hooks. For the armband, I used this template from the Padawan's Guide and stuck wire to the back to be able to mold it to my arm. I painted them and added the silver pieces. To finish it all off, I glued some beads to the two headbands and bada bing bada boom, on to the reveal! I'm super happy with how this dress turned out, especially since sewing is my forte, not dyeing and draping, and that's pretty much all this dress was. The dye job definitely could have been handled a little better, and the ponytail hangs a little too low, but besides that, I think I did a good job. I am also aware that this is supposed to be a Halloween video, but it is now late November. I just got super distracted with my video essay that I was making, and for that, I apologize. Between starting this dress and now, I've actually decided I kind of do like the ribbon down the front, so we may add that at a later date. For now, though, I'm just happy to twirl around and be Padme for a little while. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.